Hey everyone, Joel Hansen here, and for today's video we're going to be in San Angelo, Texas at a place called Tacos Locos, taking on their giant torta challenge. So this is a six pound torta challenge, yes, six pound torta challenge, consisting of an absolutely massive torta plus a pound of fries. On the torta itself we're going to have, you know, like, some avocado, so obviously some meat of our choice. The place is very well known for their El Pastor. They do it on a trumpo, which is like the big spit. So I'm definitely gonna go with that. Um, ultimately, we are gonna have 60 minutes to complete the challenge. Yes, 60 minutes to complete the giant torta and the french fries. If we do, we'll get the meal for free, which is pretty cool. And if not, we are gonna be facing the uh, price tag, which I believe is about $60. Uh, so with that, let's go eat some food. Let's have some fun. I love Texas, guys. I love cuis Mexican cuisine. I love, like, it's just, it's also perfect. Perfect. So, uh, let's go have some fun and let's eat some food. Hey, everyone, real quick, I want to thank the sponsor today's video being Surfshark. Yes, Surfshark VPN, keeping me safe on the internet and keeping you safe on the internet. So, what exactly is a VPN? So, a VPN stands for a virtual private network. This helps to anonymize your data and help keep your data safe on the internet. Yes, that's right, to help prevent your data getting stolen. Surfshark is super easy to use. I use it all the time, especially on public Wi Fi networks. So, I basically just go on my app. I click connect, and before you know it, it is connected. And now I am surfing safe. It's unlimited devices, so I can use it on my phone, I can use it on my computer, I can actually even share it with my friends and family. It's also going to save a lot of money, so if I'm in Canada, and for example, I want to do some shopping on an American website, I can simply change my location on my VPN, and voila, I am ready to rock and roll. But that can also help you watch different TV shows, so for example, if you live somewhere where you can't get Disney+, Plus, now you'll be able to get Disney+, Plus with Surfshark. Surfshark also comes with a 100% money back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose and in that right now if you use my code Joel H yes Joel H and click that link down below you can now get 83% off and three months free yes that's right 83% off three months free so click that link down below protect yourself from the internet save some money have some fun and with that let's get to the rest of the video all right around so here with the challenge so we have the one pound of fries and then the five pound torta very very large um, we have their El Pastor, which is their signature meat. We have tomatoes, we have avocado, we have lettuce. We then have cheese. There is a mayo kind of on the buns as well. Um, so yeah, it's definitely very, very large. Looks really good, but that's about it. I've actually never done a torta challenge with my first torta challenge. Luckily, it is a very authentic Mexican torta. Again, the flavors are fantastic. I'm a big, big, big fan of this El Pastor. Um, so with that, I was gonna start here just momentarily. All right, so we might as well get started. Um, one thing I don't have is some ketchup. Maybe I'll have to get some ketchup, but I do have their you salsa here. I'll take some ketchup, sure. Right. There you go, that works. You know, I love ketchup and fries, but I have some salsa if we need to use it. Um, but that's about that. So how about we get started? Uh, start with some of the, this is, it's, gonna, it's a lot of bread. It's gonna be interesting. But we'll start with the uh, meat and all the good deliciousness here. I have a glove on, I have a cut. So how about we get started? Okay, Thank you. Okay, how about I say at the count? Have Five, it. four, three, two, one. one. Let's go. Oh. Very delicious. Very hot though. This definitely incubated the heat, that's for sure. Thank you. Let me have our ketchup. Woo! There you go. Thank you. And everybody can talk and stuff, that's totally fine. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't have to be quiet. Hey everyone, welcome to this video where today we're here at Tacos Locos, or that would be uh, Spanish for Crazy Tacos, here taking on their giant torta challenge. This was actually an undefeated challenge and definitely one which was very, very sizable. I will say though, the flavors were delicious. Um, everything was beyond what I could have imagined. Um, so let's get into that a little bit more. Yeah, there's a lot of meat on this thing. Very delicious, has a really nice spice to it. Very much enjoying it though. Great flavors. Like really this place, like, just here at Taco Loco, tastes like Mexico. So for the challenge itself, you do have 60 minutes to complete it, um, but this is definitely a sizable challenge. So we had the torta itself, which was five plus pounds, and then we had the pound of french fries. You did have an option of choosing different meats, um, but I went with, in my opinion, what was the specialty here at Tacos Locos, which is their El Pastor, which is a uh, seasoned marinated uh, pork. Ooh, hot at the bottom though. 
they then cook their al pastor on a trumpo like on a spit i personally think that definitely adds a certain flavor and uh you know to the meat which i really enjoy of course el pastor can be done you know just like on a flat top for example but in this case this way with the spit you know usually there's a pineapple on top everything is just in my opinion the perfect way to do it um, so if you've ever had el pastor let me know your preferred way down below so we're just over two minutes in it is very delicious it is very hot and then some meat sweats it is a very warm evening but beautiful evening i love it here in texas you guys have great weather so and this is a texas size torta on the sandwich itself, there was avocado, there was tomatoes, there was lettuce, there was lots of cheese, um, then there was a mayonnaise on the buns, and the buns were also toasted. It was a um, kind of a big, like, I, I forget the exact terminology, but it's like bulio bread or something. Um, it's kind of like a little bit of a sweeter bread. It's one that is generally used for tortas, um, or commonly used for tortas, especially again in Mexico this being a, just an absolute giant version of it. The, also, we had the, the one side, which was the pound of fries. Um, there were no side options, um, but overall just a great combination. I did have their salsa, their house made uh, salsa verde, which was quite spicy um, there on the side if I wanted it as well. However, I was finding the flavors of the El Pastor more than sufficient. It is a very flavorful meat, at least the El Pastor here at Tacos Locos. Um, and I'll use the term, it, it was it's not like spicy, like heat spicy as in picante spicy, but it's definitely just lots and lots and lots of flavor. So many spices, um, an absolute impactful punch of flavor in your mouth, which will just tantalize your taste buds. Oh, there you go. There's some adjectives for you. But I will also say that after um, eating, you know, even the few pounds of this meat, there was a little bit of heat to it, um, but nothing too substantial. I was drinking some uh, sweet tea there. I love sweet tea when I'm in the South. Um, I, but they will also say they had a large variety of their like agua frescas, their flavored waters. You know, they had horchatas, um, they had jamaicas, they had different bananas, sandia, watermelons, they had all kinds of really cool beverage. All right. <laughs> Making our way through it. It is very delicious. Let's see if we can almost through the meat, which is pretty good. We're off to a good start. Woo. Very hot, very delicious. I do love the flavors though. So I'm gonna finish this up, probably start getting onto the fries with the bread, and uh, just keep on going. So if you're not familiar, Texas being right on the Mexican border really does offer some great Mexican cuisine. You have very authentic influence. You have, uh, you know, a large uh, Hispanic and a Mexican population living in Texas, which really brings the true authentic flavors and flair to Texas. Five minutes in. Thank you. All right, five minutes in, basically done the meat. Gets rid of some of these fries. We'll hit this bread. The fries are actually good. The El Pastor here is probably the, my favorite El Pastor I have ever had. Like I said, it was so flavorful um, and just very enjoyable. I was able to get through the meats at this point, basically leaving the breads, and then of course getting onto these french fries. Um, I did know this is where it was going to get uh, increasingly difficult because not only was I starting to fill up from the amount of food, but those were some definitely big, thick buns. Yes, hashtag down below, comment guys, thick buns. Who doesn't like some thick buns? I, I'm, I'm t of course talking about bread buns, you know, like bread, bread, toast, not any other kind of buns, um, you know. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's pretty much all the info I think I have for you today though. Um, pretty straightforward from this point. Like I said, definitely a really nice restaurant, one I would recommend if you're ever in West Texas in that San Angelo area, um, which is a little bit out in the desert, not going to lie, but the people, the food, 
um, and the beautiful kind of scapes I think really make it worthwhile to come out to San Angelo, Texas if you have never been. I know the city has put a lot of money to into the downtown kind of revamping it and it is very, very, uh, it's beautiful. Honestly, it is very beautiful. So that I want to let you get to the rest of the video. I hope you enjoy it. Hit that like button if you liked it so far. Also, feel free to consider subscribing. I really appreciate the support and that way you'll be joining the happy, healthy, hungry family. Yes. So with that everyone, at that, let's get to it. Let's see if we can complete this undefeated food challenge. And at that, I'll let you get to the rest of the video. I'm about seven and a half minutes in, something like that. Fries are pretty much done. Meat's pretty much done. Now we're just down to this bread. This is gonna be the tough and interesting part. Thank you, thank you. I also appreciate everybody coming out and watching as well. Appreciate the support. Comment down below where you live so I can maybe come to your city next. <laughs> All right, this is going to be some work, but let's get it done. Might as well. Here we go. It's a good bread, though. Yeah, I like a subway sandwich. The avocado is really good. I love the avocado on this. This is basically uh, avocado, mayonnaise, bread. Could be worse. Probably about 10 and a half minutes in. This last, uh, last bun left. Bottom food, very delicious though. Very impressed. Like I said, the El Pastor and everything here just tastes like Mexico. I love it. Oh yeah, this one is heavy. Definitely got that juice soaked into it. See that bounce on it? Yeah. So much flavor. Flavor is red. Heavy is another.
The El Paso and its juice is actually have quite a bit of spice to it. Pretty impressive. Definitely have a little bit of a mouth burn going on. The cante. <laughs> about like 1440, 1445. Woo, a lot of food, but we're coming in close. That's it. Just get it done. Yep. Woo! Yeah! That's it. That's it. So just finished it up, about 17 minutes, 21 seconds. Woo, very delicious. I will say I really enjoyed it. I was very worried for that bread and while it was definitely big and heavy, um, it was a very nice bread, I will, I'll give it that. Uh, the meat, the El Pastor was fantastic. That's your specialty here, I definitely see why. Even the fries weren't bad. So yeah, I want to give a huge thank you to Tacos Locos here in San Angelo. Thank you so much for having me out. And thanks everybody for coming out, really appreciate all of you. Food, which is pretty cool. 
I will probably, I think I'm safe to take this glove. Like I said, I have a cut, which I'm trying not to get this spiciness in, which honestly, there's a really good amount of spice, like heat to that El Pastor. Um, not, over, not overwhelming, and if you don't eat, you know, four pounds of it or whatever, you probably won't have a problem. But very, very good. Um, but that's about that, everybody. So, excuse me, that's compliments to the chef. Compliments to the chef. Yeah, it means it was very good. So everyone, until next time, of course, I have built the hungry, happy eating. Hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, that's about it. Very <laughs> near. Happy eating. All right, and so here we also have what they call a choco flan. Uh, they in insisted I give this a try. It looks like a flan on top of it. Is it a chocolate cake? Yeah? All right. And then of course we have the carjeta, or kind of it looks caramel on top. All right, let's give this a try. Some strawberries and some chocolate cake. Very moist. Have a flan. It is very good. I really do like flan. And it's cooked very nicely, I will give them that. So I do appreciate I appreciate the dessert that they assumed I wanted, so but it is good. I told them I tried. We have some pecans on there as well. Chocolate flan. It's good. So we have the we now have a churro which is caramel in it. It's called a churro relleno because it's filled. Churro, excuse my pronunciations, but look look at that juice. That's the juicy bite I want right there. Oh man, woo! Hot and warm fried dough. Man, it was hard to go wrong with that there. Very delicious. That caramel. Very good. Chocolate flam is good too, but this is very, very good. I do love a good churro. Hey everyone, Joe Lance here, and today I am in San Angelo State Park. Yes, we are in San Angelo State Park. So San Angelo being, again, kind of heading into West Texas. Um, this is part of their state park. So this state park is absolutely massive. They have over 50, yes, 50 miles of walking trails alone, like hiking trails. Um, a lot of people bring horses in here. This is a very, very small sector of it, as you can understand. Like the thing is, I don't know how many acres and acres and acres of land. Um, this is the again the uh, lake. So this is the lake. This is what we decided to kind of head out first. Um, this is on the south side of the park. So the lake. Apparently, um, there's like quite a bit of underbrush kind of in the water. So it's not really uh, best for swimming. You could swim. Um, I have heard though that there are other lakes in San Angelo. I'd like check out. Got a boat launch over there. Definitely a warm day. It's very nice and still. Um, it is uh, mid-September, mid-September here in San Angelo. And I gotta say, it is like 90s. It's like, I think it's supposed to be like 96. It is 90s out, very little wind, very warm. This is like summer. And honestly, I'm not complaining. It's already cold up north in Canada. So uh, we'll show us around a little bit more. We'll have some fun. There's always lots of these little um, day use uh, stations around. Um, but yeah, we're gonna head uh, this way, that way, that's back north, I guess, or whatever. Um, they do have wild buffalo all in here. Um, they do have some longhorns. They do a feeding every Saturday. I didn't really, uh, this is a Friday. I could have came tomorrow instead and probably saw the feeding. Um, but this, you might still see some of the animals along fence lines, which is pretty cool. Um, then we're gonna head the, towards some other trails and we'll check that out. So yeah, this is kind of the lake portion. Lady said it was worth checking out um, just to see it. it is a lake. And uh, so yeah, let's head on up and let's have some fun and let's go see what trails this big, big place has to offer. But this is just like, this is like a perfect perspective of West-ish Texas, even a lot of Texas, just like, I don't know, I don't wanna say desert, but half deserty. I mean, there's cactuses and a lot of land. Texas is huge. So just as we're driving across, here's some scapes. Here's all the cactuses, the cacti, I believe the proper pronunciation is. Um, in there, they do have the loose livestock, they call it. 
I'm not sure. No, I don't think that's a cow over there. I'm just stopped in the middle of the road, but uh, not like it's not like it's very busy. Um, but yeah, so they have these fences, obviously, again to try to keep the uh, lot, some of the livestock off the road there. But yeah, very, very like just a lot of land, a lot, a lot of land. Uh, you know, the perfect uh, bison keep out um, or keep your distance. So yeah, this is the San Angelo State Park. Look at this, look at this, we found one. Here we found a very angry looking buffalo and or bison. And like he looked like as soon as I pulled the car in, he just like gave me a death stare. And it's ironic because it's right beside a sign that says, keep your distance. Bison are aggressive. There you go. I'm, I'm obviously like there's a fence there. Sorry, there's a fence in between us. I'm gonna uh, hop out and uh, you know, I'm not gonna go near him per se, but I will, go, I will go to the fence. Hopefully, I mean, not that I would ever recommend doing this to anybody, but I am going to the fence just to, you know, see the, the bison. What's up, bison? Are you maybe, he has his tongue out. I don't know, I don't think he's friendly, but he's a very big animal. So there you go, we, I gotta see a bison, which is pretty cool. I'm glad we did. And while the bison's just there hanging out, he decided to take a seat, trying to get some shade. I don't blame him, like I said, it's very hot out today. Um, you know, and obviously keeping a lookout for like rattlesnakes and stuff. Although again, with it being so hot, I anticipated it would be hiding. Uh, but look at these cactuses, cacti. Like it's cool, you know, they got like little flowers. I'm assuming those are flowers that are going to bloom, the purple. Or maybe they're just seed pods, actually. Maybe seed pods by the look of that. But uh, yeah, pretty cool. It's like, you know, the funny thing, or I don't know if it's, I don't know if funny is the right word, but just so many people, like this is so normal. Like if you grew up here in San Angelo, you know, you'd be used to seeing cactuses. You'd be used to seeing, you know, landscape like this, like deserts and stuff. It, you know, but for me, someone coming from, you know, the Canada, from the north, it is so foreign. And I think that's what's so amazing about getting out and seeing some of the world, you know. You get to see things like, they, you can, this is so strange to me. To see a cactus in the wild, it's like, whoa. But for so many people, that's totally normal. Just as like, they can, Canada, they saw these big evergreen trees and snow everywhere, and it being freezing cold, they'd be like, whoa. So it's so cool, you know, everybody. So that's kind of like, uh, you know, if you ever get a, a chance to go somewhere different, see something new, I would recommend it. But yeah, pretty cool. And the uh, uh, buffalo is, I think he's trying to dig himself up. He was just shaking there a minute, a minute ago. Now he's chewing something, but I think he's trying to dig himself a bit of a hole, probably cooler underneath, but yeah, I think we'll move on. See you later, buffalo. Nice knowing you. And this is what they call the Highland Range Scenic Overlook. Which is pretty cool, obviously. Uh, a little bit of an elevated position over basically the plains or fields or whatever you want to call them. Definitely just shows like how vast everything is. Uh, additionally, on the way up here, and there's kind of like a day use area over there, I think it'll give another view, it'll give a view of that side. Um, I saw some wild turkeys. I didn't get them on the video, I was driving, but wild turkeys. So there's lots of wildlife around. And uh, yeah, very beautiful, very scenic. It's uh, it's pretty impressive. Like I said, just lots of land out here in Western, getting to West Texas. Speaking of birds, I think it's a vulture sitting on the uh, table there. Yeah, a vulture, turkey vulture. Um, but yeah, here is the other part uh, that I was talking about, kind of what I'll call the other part of this scenic overlook. Um, so this side, oh, there you go. Well, let's, well, we'll get out and see it. And here we have the other side of this scenic overlook. Um, so this is overviewing, kind of more what I like to say the park, like there's that lake, there's the lake we're at over there. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. I probably, um, she said now a lot of the hiking trails are more accessible from the northern entrance due to timing. I don't know if I'll go to the northern entrance. I may or may not. These look like some kind of trails down there, actually speaking, um, where it's all broken up. But I do hope to, yeah, like down here, but I do hope to get on a trail a little bit. Um, and again, I don't know exactly know what these trails are gonna look like. Like in a lot of these ones are just very 
flat and plain. I mean, obviously just kind of going through, I guess I'll call this a canyon or, you know, around the land. Um, but I do want to get in a trail and get a little bit of a hike in, uh, just a quick one. Um, so let's go find, try to find a trail and uh, maybe do a little bit of walking. So this is the start of the Burkhead Trailhead. Um, Burkett. Uh, so basically, I guess Henry Burkett was from San Angelo. He's served Texas Parks and Wildlife for 32 years. He was started as a game warden, worked up to executive director. A nearby plaque honors his service to his country as a World War II veteran, as well as his service in Texas. The trail was named in his honor. Um, yeah, it's uh, a big trail. I, it is the kind of trail that we were looking at. Like, that was the observation point right there. And this is a multi-use trail, so you can use your horses and or walk or bike. If you ask me, I'm going to say that this is probably part of a trail, maybe, mm, I don't know if I want to say maybe best used for a horse or a bike, but it is definitely a trail just kind of heading over kind of flat land. So I'm going to walk a little bit up this way, see if there's anything interesting, and if not, I'll probably um, head back, we'll head back this way further, and I'll try one, there's one more other trail that's kind of on the way back, which looks, uh, well, it might be interesting, so we'll find out. If anybody wants to see this, a very, very large grasshopper and or locust, whatever you want to call it, that is a big bug, about an inch and a half, inch and a half maybe? Not as big as the ones I saw in Louisiana, admittingly, but that is a big one. So we walked down this trail a bit. It does get like slightly more covered over with these trees, like sparsely covered. Um, and then like kind of just goes through, kind of we saw weaving through the valley, kind of we saw from that lookup point. So I'm probably gonna head up, uh, head back up at this point and we'll check out one other trail. And here we have wild turkeys right up there. See that little black dot right there? That's wild turkey. Let's see if we can get closer without them running away too much. Oh, see him? There you go, there he's running. It's the, I'm sure it's the same pair of uh, turkeys that I saw earlier. There they are. Wild turkeys. Yeah, there we go, wild turkeys. They're just cruising around. Although, one, one of them, like, did one of them, I would think be a male and a female, but one of them doesn't distinctly have much of a bigger head, like in, you know, more, uh, I don't know, comb or whatever they called in the other, but anyway, wild turkeys. There we go, we saw them. And we're now in the Isabel Hart multi-purpose area. There's another view of the lake. And then we have um, some like, again, more kind of picnic area things over there. Same as that way. And there is some campgrounds down that way. There is camping here in the state park. Not that I know anything about the camping here in the state park. Um, but yeah, you can camp here in the state park, which is pretty cool. So here we have a direction to Lanky, Lackey? No clue that is, or to the nature trail. So Lanky, Lackey that way, nature trail this way. Let's uh, check out a little bit of this nature trail. Um, this is, again, I don't really know what to expect. This one is a little bit more grown in than the other one. I would say this is a lot less of, again, something that you'd bring like a horse on. Um, and obviously where it looks like we're heading into the brush down there. So we will check it on out. So the trail uh, kind of weaves through, I think all this bush and I think it comes up over there. I think it comes up over there and then leads to like the kind of campus grounds. Um, that's kind of what I'm getting by the way this trail moves. But yeah, it's cool. It kind of weaves through all this. You get to see all this uh, greenery and such, and definitely is a, what they call it, wildlife trail or wilderness trail, nature trail, nature trail, there you go. It definitely is a nature trail. 